Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, English, there, there will be a little bit of German here and there, okay? So uh, 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 I think you'll, you'll get a little taste of that anyway. Do, do many of you speak German? No. <laughs> uh, has, how's therapy going for you guys at this point, uh, those who work with the German? Okay? All right. Because um, I know it's not the happiest language at times, but um, I've done my best to to clarify a few misunderstandings about it over time. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, for those of you who are brought here against your will, you're probably wondering what tonight is. Is that correct? Some of you? All right. I was wondering myself, uh, and I decided rather last minute uh, what to talk about, but that's what we're going to um, address in a moment. Uh, but I'd like to at least welcome you to what I have called the failed intellectual goodwill tour uh, for about the last I don't know how long at this point, year and a half, something like that. Uh, essentially an attempt to take a Twitter account on the road, uh, which has uh, in some ways proven to be probably the dumbest decision I've ever made and uh, in some ways perhaps the, the best decision uh, that I've ever made. Um, we'll, we'll see how that looks uh, tonight. But I want to thank you for that introduction. It's very kind of you. Um, I have to say though, uh, uh, the proper term for what I do in, in my position now that I'm no longer at the university is, in fact, uh, uh, Twitter phenomenon. Yeah, uh, Twitter phenomen. I guess is the term I recently saw in Austria, uh, or uh, Twitter star of the intelligentsia. So um, uh, I don't know if I should be flattered by that or not, uh, but uh, it seems to be maybe a step up from phenomenon. I'm not sure. Um, but perhaps the best description uh, that I've seen so far, um, in all modesty, uh, is probably this, the uh, Ashton Kutcher of the Humanities. Um, I don't know what field of the humanities Ashton Kutcher has excelled in, uh, but uh, I, he's, is he a phenomenon as well? Is that so? I didn't know that. Okay, I did not know that. Uh, you probably blocked me a long time ago, so I, uh, I, I, I did not know that. Um, but to clear up any misunderstanding, the proper term uh, besides failed intellectual is, of course, uh, der Twittergott. Uh, so uh, feel free to call me that. I, I, don't, I don't like to stick to any formalities. No need for Herr Professor Twittergott. Uh, just Twittergott will, will, will suffice. Um, and I want to thank you for uh, putting this together. Uh, thank you for the work in uh, getting the word out. Um, I have to also thank uh, Radio Sarajevo for uh, publishing the most disturbing graphic I've ever uh, witnessed myself. Uh, I, I kind of keep hoping that the, the internet will truly break one day and this image will disappear, but uh, it has not happened uh, quite yet. Um, but it's very nice when people take the initiative to invite this crazy little uh, show uh, to their town and uh, go through the effort uh, to have me come. Especially nice when you arrive and you see people are happy to see you. Um, a little bit disappointing when you realize uh, they actually might be happier to see someone else. Uh, but you, uh, you do the best you can uh, despite the fact and, and you try to somehow make, make the best of the situation. Mm. For me, I have to apologize, I'm rather tired tonight. This has been an overscheduled uh, little leg of the tour, not meant to become quite this busy. Um, but I found myself in four or five countries in the last four or five days. Uh, all here um, in your part of the world, which I've just been getting to know since last year, so I don't know very much about it. Um, been trying to understand. Um, your politics here have a reputation for being somewhat complicated. Uh, is, is that true or is that a cliche? Nine. Nine? Yeah. Yeah. I hear both nine and yeah, so I'm going to take that as confirmation of the complexities of uh, various positions here. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. So it's been a little bit hard for me uh, because I, I try at times um, uh, to, to do some political jokes, uh, but when you really don't know what you're talking about, um, it's, it's good to be cautious, uh, I've found, and I uh, really have tried my best uh, to inform myself the best I can about various uh, sensitivities and historical uh, conflicts and various grudges, and I've tried hard to avoid offending people uh, the very best I can. Um, sometimes I'm actually 
tempted not to talk about politics at all and just stick to sports. Uh, so I, I thought I should probably just do that tonight and uh, begin by uh, congratulating you all on the great success of Mr. Djokovic. Uh, he must be very proud uh, of his accomplishment. Um, I know that uh, you're, you're big fans and uh, I, I have to say I, I share your, 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 your joy in uh, his success. Uh, so, so congratulations. Wait, excuse me? Oh, he's from Croatia. Ah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I from from Croatia. Uh, my apologies. Um, I will I will get it right one of these days. Uh, so I asked, as I sometimes do, uh, what people were interested in hearing me talk about. Um, there's never any any guarantee that I will talk about that, but I'm at least curious to hear what you might be interested in. Um, I received a range of answers. Uh, some more predictable than, than others, I suppose. Um, maybe you know some of these people. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, all, all, good, all good ideas uh, in their way. Um, and I found they're all touching on various things, politics, history, culture. Uh, uh, what's that? Poetry, poetry also represented. Um, uh, I didn't know that there was Radovan Karadzic uh, poetry. Um, and uh, uh, I, I, was, I was interested though at that point because uh, some of you might remember George W. Bush's paintings uh, that became public not long ago, which, which I will say uh, without any shame, I was quite impressed by and remain impressed by. Um, better, much better than I ever expected. Um, so I didn't really know what, uh, what you're interested in, but then I asked my host before arriving sort of what, what the zeitgeist is like, uh, what, the, what the spirit of the times is, uh, what people are talking about, etc. And uh, I was told that um, there is a bit of pessimism uh, about these days. Uh, is that true? Are people in Sarajevo are pessimistic? Nine. Uh, some yes, some no. Uh, I don't know. I can't judge. It's my first time here. I arrived uh, three or four hours ago. Um, I, I really cannot judge. But I did get some sense of that, uh, at least with, with, with this answer uh, for a topic to discuss tonight. Uh, death and the inevitability of it. Uh, I, I, you know, I always would think a death period would have been enough, but uh, I, I, and the inevitability of it, I think, really uh, underscores a few things. But in talking uh, to my to my hosts, uh, they actually thought that might be an interesting thing to to talk about uh, tonight. It's not just pep pessimism, but uh, optimism. I was told that the organizers of tonight's event are representatives of a new paradigm of optimism. Uh, which is a new subversive uh, uh, paradigm, is that correct? correct. A, a post-ironic uh, uh, optimism. And uh, uh, to me, I, I, I did not press the point when we discussed this a few minutes ago, but uh, they're also the people who invited me uh, tonight, uh, uh, which I, I found a little bit surprising. Um, I'm not normally known for optimism, um, I, I, I will tell you that. Uh, but at the same time, um, you might not be completely wrong about uh, uh, having someone like me talk uh, about maybe issues involving uh, optimism versus pessimism and so on. And so you're going to try to think that through a little bit. And so I asked, well, OK, if people uh, here are typically somewhat pessimistic, was there a moment of optimism? And I was told, yes, uh, not that long ago, uh, I was told. And I, and I did some quick uh, reading. Um, does anyone remember this? Yes, all right. Uh, was, it a, was it an optimistic time? Was it a time full of hope? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, I, I, I can't judge. I was not here. I have a couple of articles that I read. There was never a time full of hope in, in, in Bosnia. Okay. Uh, there were planning. There were what? Yes, I was told. I was told open uh, direct democracy and experiment. And I asked. I followed up. I wasn't going to just assume this was probably utopian. I said, "So what came of it?" I was told nothing. <laughs> and I and I asked, "Well, about the protests in general? They were wide scale, active. What came of it?" I was told nothing. Uh, 
But uh, I, I, I can at least gladly report that at least uh, an individual entry in Wikipedia did come about uh, as a result. And so you did manage to at least uh, make your mark uh, upon the internet uh, in one form or another. Yes, so uh, at least this is recorded. Um, and when in general, just the other day when I was trying to get a sense of, of what people are interested in here, what's going on here, there's one story that made its way uh, uh, through the internet, over the internet, uh, uh, above and below the internet over the last uh, couple of weeks, I've seen several times, a story about a certain type of optimism and perhaps pessimism, hard to uh, uh, interpret, but evidently uh, there are more and more tourists coming to Sarajevo. Is this correct? Yeah. Yeah. I can believe that. Uh, and I thought, is that, is that a good thing? Yes. Oh, I heard some yes. I, I heard no no's in response to that. Uh, the, the interesting story that's been circulating, though, is that, is that uh, what our most tourists interested in is, in fact, uh, a type of war tourism, I, I've heard it described as uh, throughout. So interesting, because I thought this is probably a very good development, more tourists at the same time. Um, uh, I, I imagine you have many more interesting things as well that people could, in fact, uh, discover, uh, would want to learn more about, etc. So I didn't know which category to put this one in, in terms of good signs or, or bad signs, necessarily. Um, I do know, however, from the traveling I've done recently, um, there are also tourists who are, who are interested in things um, uh, uh, even less uh, uh, joyous and hopeful than, than, than warfare. Um, if, you, if you visit Bulgaria, for instance, uh, you'll know that one of the main things tourists like to do there is to go to the dentist. Uh, <laughs> dental tourism, a uh, significant aspect uh, of the economy right now. And I got a little bit nervous and self-conscious. Um, I was reading the in-flight magazine. Um, I mean, I've never read an in-flight magazine, but now I've started to read in-flight magazines. Um, but it made me more and more self-conscious with every ad I saw because I'd just been to the dentist so long ago and uh, they became more and more convincing and somewhat coercive with each, with each ad I saw. Uh, and in fact, I learned that um, if you have a couple of days to spare on Sophia, then you should visit a dentist even if you don't think you need to. Um, it made me feel a little bit, a little bit self-conscious. I, I try not to smile uh, in my, my few days in, in Sophia. Um, but I remembered when we were talking just a, a little while ago, optimism, pessimism, um, one of the great uh, Bulgarian philosophers of our time, uh, the CEO of, of ex executive director of, of Bulgaria Air, um, uh, had a wonderful message to passengers um, uh, uh, such as myself about the, the, this special time of year of, of spring as a wonderful time for hope and good messages without going into extremes, of course. Blind optimism that fails to see the problems will lead us nowhere. However, resigned pessimism in which problems are only a reason to complain is not better, comma, either, period. Um, think about that for a while because uh, I don't think anything that I'm going to have to say uh, this evening is going to be in any way more enlightening uh, than the uh, Air Bulgaria in-flight magazine. Um, but, but to me, at least, there are lots of people talking about this right now. The place is not so far away, uh, optimism, pessimism. Um, certainly, uh, one thing you might be a little bit pessimistic about, especially if you were a David Bowie fan and remain one, uh, recent, recent uh, passing. Um, however, a story that's made its way uh, through the internet recently, a new mural uh, to David Bowie uh, right here near Fair City. Um, do people like it? That's the other question I have. <laughs> no, they don't like it. All right, uh, I, 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 I'm not really one to judge. Um, I, will, I, will, I will leave the aesthetic decisions uh, to, to uh, others who are present, but uh, maybe I'll also put that in the mixed category somehow. Um, and when I was trying to get some sense of the economic situation here right now, um, I also didn't really know exactly what to, what to make of this or how to interpret it, but I um, looked at the exchange rate just to figure out how much money I needed to get a taxi uh, at the airport, uh, and I, I found that really quickly. Uh, interesting is that as soon as you check out this exchange rate, um, you are also offered uh, a, a loan if you have bad credit. Uh, so I was all of a sudden a little bit concerned about the state of the uh, economy here as, as in, in many other places. But for me, I also tried to think about optimism in general. I've tried to define this over the years. There's the classic way uh, that I'm sure uh, you know, uh, the glass being half full, right? Uh, the typical uh, contrary position of 
pessimism, uh, the glass being uh, half empty. Of course, there's also the uh, pragmatic uh, uh, question, uh, what's in the glass, uh, which I think is probably significant um, for us right now in thinking this, this through, um, because it seems to me as if there's a question of what those categories are and what that means right now, especially the idea of a post-ironic optimism, uh, what that involves. Um, and I tried to search very quickly through my own archives of what I've had to say on the subject of optimism and pessimism, and I found that in general, I've tried hard to um, complicate uh, those, those, those uh, positions uh, over time um, and making the point that there are ways in which uh, there is in fact a, a pessimistic position which is also a naively optimistic position, uh, that there are ways uh, in which one in fact uh, can think about uh, developments that might not normally see, be seen as progress as in fact being uh, something that is, that is uh, promising and full of potential, um, or in fact also perhaps asking uh, the question of whether or not uh, pessimism also provides uh, perhaps an openness uh, for uh, something like a certain type of hope uh, that could come about by not accepting uh, uh, the world the way it is, etc. Which is what brings me to, to um, my travels recently, because I'm going to say that the question about optimism, pessimism is not necessarily uh, one that is that is uh, 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 that is important here alone. In fact, I'm just coming now from uh, Zagreb. Um, some of you I know have followed political uh, uh, events in, in in Croatia recently. Is that right? Uh, some discussion of it. Uh, gotten a fair amount of coverage um, in in various media uh, in terms of. of of current political development, uh, right-wing movement, uh, uh, fascist involvement, the culture minister ha who has made no friends whatsoever, uh, been covered to some extent in the, the German media uh, uh, as well, essentially in the, the same terms. Um, but also, as you probably know, just very recently, an extremely large uh, protest uh, against uh, uh, plans, interference um, on the part of, of government officials in a new curriculum plan that was to make uh, uh, school curriculum more patriotic, as, I was, uh, as it was described to me, and in fact um, also putting a number of books on a certain uh, banned list of books because of too heavily uh, uh, sexual content, I think was the official, official reason, but, but, but other uh, reasons as well. Um, and this has been seen, at least in uh, uh, the German interpretation, very much as a question of, of Kulturkampf, one of those German words that's made its way uh, into any number of other languages um, in terms of, of a larger uh, cultural conflict about identity, about uh, 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 questions of, of uh, uh, the politics, essentially, of of national identity, but also of the question of, of how uh, individual nations relate to each other, but also to the notion of Europe, of course, uh, which is one of the, the issues that has surrounded all of this. Um, for me, though, I can happily report that in my little bit of time in Zagreb just now, uh, just turning on the TV, I found there were very little signs of any kind of uh, nationalism uh, that uh, I could see. Um, I just flipped through two or three channels. I, I, I didn't see that much. Um, but. Uh, I don't know, but still, uh, there might be a reason for caution, uh, as the Germans are. Um, the, the, the good news is, however, in terms of any uh, flag waving in, in Croatia right now, uh, there isn't just one flag that's, that's being waved. Uh, so that is, that is the, the good news uh, at present. Um, this is from where I spoke last night uh, at uh, uh, Club Mama, if any of you know that. Uh, great place. Um, but. But for me, the issues that were being discussed are not uncommon, and that's kind of what I want to what I want to talk about um, are ways in which, just over the last the last days, um, the the list of problems that were described to me here uh, I've encountered uh, almost everywhere. The, the first word being corruption, uh, very clearly. Um, as you know, corruption can be a problem in many uh, young democracies. Uh, it is not such a problem in a place like where I'm from, the United States, uh, uh, mature uh, democracies um, that are well established. Um, as you know, uh, we have legalized corruption some time ago. Uh, so uh, it is very rarely uh, a problem. Um, but I know that there's a lot to sort out uh, in that regard. And this, is, this has been one of the conflicts that I've noticed in any number of, of, of places. But I've also seen um, active efforts to organize against 
um, uh, uh, corruption in various ways, economic interests, uh, government policies, etc. Um, just very recently, before I was in Zagreb, I was in, in Belgrade. Um, some of you probably spent some time in Belgrade. I didn't know if I was going to like uh, the city at first. Uh, there were some uh, troubling signs uh, when, I, when I first got there. It might not be my kind of town necessarily. Uh, Fortunately, I, after a little bit of time, I realized uh, there are other dimensions uh, to Belgrade as well. Uh, fortunately, that I found somewhat more heartening. And in fact, there are in fact those who are friends of negation uh, in Belgrade as well, even if it's sometimes limited simply to uh, questions of bad coffee. Uh, but still for me, all optimistic, uh, optimistic signs. And I think um, this is in fact something that, that we mentioned, mentioned before, there's a very big project uh, uh, in, the, in the works right now in Belgrade that some of you have probably read about. Um, is this something that's been covered a fair amount in the media here or not? The uh, large waterfront development uh, in, in Belgrade. Uh, but something that for me has been interesting to see the, the protest movement that's grown up around it and the debate surrounding it. Um, there's a lot of nervousness about a big project like that with a lot of money coming in uh, from abroad and questions about what kind of an impact that will have on the city as, as a whole. Um, of course, in Belgrade, they're often a little bit concerned about uh, large development projects there uh, from outside. Um, I know there's still a little bit uh, uh, of disappointment about a, a major uh, American project there not so long ago. Uh, didn't turn out uh, uh, quite as, as, as planned. Um, but the protest is largely focused in ways around um, an attempt to gather a wide, a wide uh, 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 um, coalition of various forces who are interested in um, uh, a type of smart development of the city. If there's one thing that I've noticed in the places I've been in the last days, just through a superficial knowledge of them, just talking to people, urban planning issues seem to be uh, 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 the top of the list of most everywhere I've been, um, because of course it's the nexus of of uh, political programs, economic interests, uh, questions of aesthetics, uh, questions of ways in which a city envisions its future and so on. Um, there the, the idea has been very much one of organizing around uh, a big friendly symbol like a uh, yellow rubber ducky and the attempt to, to make the case that not to drown the city um, through an enormous uh, development project like that. Um, I've made the case they might want to, in fact, uh, make that, that symbol a little bit edgier. Uh, haven't necessarily, but they've uh, continued to organize uh, with that and found ways essentially to think about how uh, a project that's being presented in a very utopian light, this is a typical kind of advertisement, uh, does in fact have some very real costs. Um, and right now uh, the fight has gotten much uh, more difficult uh, recently when, uh, in fact, demolition simply began overnight, uh, not long ago, without any uh, approval whatsoever. Um, but again, uh, a protest movement that is quick to react, uh, that's innovative, that knows about um, visibility, knows about media coverage for a position, and very quickly, uh, many of the, the billboards advertising the project uh, took on uh, 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 a rather different uh, note when the ski mask destruction uh, 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 agents essentially who, who started to tear down um, the buildings to make way for this project uh, showed up um, in, 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 in that kind of a light. But the other issue that I've seen everywhere I've been so far has been the question of media coverage of protest movements like this. Of you have people taking an initiative but does it get any press? Um, it's been a major problem there, but again, very recently, an enormous protest, some 10,000 people, uh, but described uh, in any number of, of, of media as uh, a walk uh, through the city, not a march, not a protest, um, aimed at a few uh, uh, individual journalists, not a much larger project. So the challenge is clear. I've tried to ask friends of mine there about uh, what they see uh, the situation being right now. I got sort of a typical maybe typically uh, a dour or dark uh, interpretation uh, of the situation. But I would say even as someone who doesn't know the place very well, there is a certain emptiness perhaps, a certain vacancy uh, that's apparent in the city. Even uh, once you s simply arrive, uh, you have this sense uh, rather, rather quickly and you have the presence of large uh, scale investment capital is also very present. Um, that also have very little problem advertising their relative power uh, in regard to uh, that of the city itself. Um, but any number of, of debates 
that I spent a little bit of time uh, learning something about uh, over that time about what it is that's actually taking place in terms of those types of developments. Um, a, good, a new cultural center, optimistic, good news, uh, return of Tito for his birthday, uh, questionably good uh, or bad news, but I was at least very happy to learn of a new center for aesthetics uh, in Belgrade. Uh, a lot of work on the body, uh, unfortunately mainly uh, involving uh, Photoshop, uh, but for me in general the, the, the big story is that of a new con direct connection between New York uh, and Belgrade. Uh, which uh, is going to take effect soon, and I have to congratulate um, uh, uh, Air Serbia on what is probably the scariest passenger safety information card uh, that I've ever seen. I think this man is very aware of the fact that he's about to die. Um, so that was interesting. It's just something you notice uh, when you're on a, a, a Goodwill tour. Uh, uh, but I've had very good experiences with airlines, um, also Bulgaria Air, although I have to say for an English speaker you do get a little bit nervous when you look at their website and it looks just a little bit too much like airbag. Uh, however, however, uh, a good experience in general. But where, for me, uh, moving on briefly and then I'll get back to, to the central question at, at hand, um, but simply to make the point that these are issues that in fact um, I've encountered everywhere, is recently in uh, Albania, um, for the first time, I'd seen the advertisements for years uh, and thought I would uh, uh, finally, finally visit. Um, as, 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 as you know, uh, I had an excellent time there. Uh, Albania is largely about self-discovery, uh, I found. Uh, and one of the, one of the uh, largest surprises that I had in Albania, um, not knowing much about politics uh, in Albania, uh, is that it has quietly been ruled for many years now uh, by uh, none other than John Travolta. Uh, so this is the first thing you see uh, in the airport in Tirana uh, is uh, John Travolta welcoming you to his, to his world. Um, but the same issues front and center uh, in, my, in my next stop, um, invited to, to Kosovo um, directly after that. Um, interesting again for me, a place I know very little about. Uh, did a little research, found some interesting um, travel articles about it, um, uh, about uh, various um, uh, aspects of, of, of a very dynamic uh, new society, some amount of turmoil, um, and interestingly a number of articles about whether or not uh, 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 Pristina is safe for uh, Americans, whether Kosovo is safe uh, uh, for any number of people. Uh, frankly, it did make me a tiny bit nervous. I was relieved in arriving at the airport and finding uh, that, in fact, um, uh, I had arrived in Kosovo, uh, which was a great place. I had a lovely time. I cannot recommend Kosovo. It sounds very dangerous uh, to me from, from what I've read. Uh, the bad news, a fair number of American tourists uh, already uh, uh, in, in Kosovo in various places. As you probably know, very uh, U.S. friendly there very friendly to the Clintons in particular. Um, I was in fact happy to see that they're taking an even hand in the current uh, election in the United States. Some of you will recognize uh, uh, Senator Sanders in his earlier days. Um, but all of this has had me thinking about questions of, of potentials, of, of questions of uh, political organization, questions of, of uh, optimism, pessimism, if we're going to talk about it in those terms helping me to try to formulate uh, my own sort of definition of Europe right now, uh, because my experience in Europe for most of my time has had to do with much more westerly regions. Uh, it's finally expanding now uh, to, to other parts of Europe. Um, my working definition uh, at present uh, is of, uh, a contemporary definition, I suppose, is of Europe as something of a Greek startup. Um, of course, uh, not just a Greek startup, but as happens to all startups uh, then bought by Germany uh, and of course then uh, sold to uh, Google. Uh, so this is uh, often how I've been thinking about it uh, at, at, at present um, and for me though I probably the best way to describe uh, various shifts in, in power um, is often with an allegory and some of you probably saw this make its way through the internet recently. Fascinating photograph um, in the airport in, in Zurich of a German Chancellor's plane, uh, uh, very close next to it, uh, 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 the French uh, uh, plane, uh, Hollande's plane, 
But if you are wondering where the real power is in Europe at present, uh, you just need to look a little bit farther uh, and see that, in fact, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's Iron Maiden. I don't know if they're responsible for various changes in Europe's outlook right now, but there are signs of, of, of various changes. Um, for me, though, uh, this has largely been an experience of trying to uh, quickly gather uh, some, some initial impressions. I, I did try to do a fair amount of research early on, had some trouble. Uh, there was a good book suggested to me in terms of background uh, in, in, in learning about many of the places I had visited. Uh, it sounded worthwhile. I was a little bit uh, skeptical when I saw the uh, author. Uh, I thought, in fact, uh, there might be a bit of a political political agenda at work here. Uh, a little bit cautious uh, uh, about that. Um, I don't know, maybe you've read this, maybe, maybe you can recommend it. Is that all right? All right. Okay. Don't need to read it. Um, but for me in general, I've been left then uh, trying to gather some, some uh, uh, very quick impression of very complex uh, political situations. Uh, some of you uh, have perhaps been following develops in developments in Macedonia recently. Anyone follow news from Macedonia? Um, uh, uh, something that has gotten a fair amount of press is, in fact, um, uh, 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 various aesthetic decisions uh, right now on the part of the, the, the government, uh, a certain revival of socialist realism, uh, um, although they're also a very active protest movement right now that, in fact, is very aware of the power of, of, uh, uh, of representations like this. Um, and in fact, I'm sure that you've heard about uh, the main uh, vehicle for uh, protests there right now. Um, I was a little confused at the beginning, thought it was the Color Revolution, which knows a body shop in uh, New Jersey, uh, officially the Colorful Revolution. Um, uh, I happened upon it by, by uh, chance when I was there. Fascinating, uh, uh, in fact, um, uh, development of how this has taken place. I actually uh, originally imagined that this was the work of paint guns of some sort, but in fact it's a very uh, sort of ingeniously low-tech uh, slingshot-like device. Uh, if you can imagine that, two people holding a thing, spreading it, uh, one pulling it back and launching uh, essentially the, the, the paint missile. Um, one photo that circulated a lot recently, uh, summing it up uh, uh, right, right here. Um, and Study this carefully. I, I might be mistaken, all right? Uh, I might be mistaken. I had the sense, though, this has been uh, going on for some weeks, every day, every evening, I think at 6 or 8 o'clock, I think 6 o'clock, um, uh, that, that then a different target uh, is, is picked out. Is that correct? And, and you go to the site. Um, I did have the sense that the authorities are getting a little bit accustomed to this. It might be coming slightly routine. Uh, tell me if I'm correct. Uh, I think that this man right here uh, might also be the one that I saw myself uh, taking a rather different posture uh, uh, right here, seemed rather less, rather less uh, concerned about, about what was taking place. Uh, but in general, a fascinating protest movement um, that also very debated uh, just in the few days I was there talking to people. But it is clear that there are signs of some amount of concern uh, about it spreading um, the hotel are always saying, I don't usually read the rules and regulations, but I did this time and it was all pretty standard. Uh, keep the place clean and, and, and quiet. Um, of course, they did feel the need to add um, also no painting on the walls is allowed. Uh, so there was a sense at least that perhaps there's some, some concern about uh, what could actually happen uh, with this. But any number of political stories uh, that have come out of Macedonia very, very recently um, that I don't need to go into in any, in any detail uh, but in general, the point being made very much of, of a certain crisis point being reached, which uh, I thought perhaps was a sort of dramatic exaggeration, uh, but my sense from any number of people talking to is that it's not so terribly exaggerated. Um, in the United States, of course, we're no, we're, we're no strangers to great concentrations of power uh, in the hands of, of very few people. Uh, especially in the hands of people who make uh, rather questionable uh, aesthetic uh, decisions. Um, I think that you're uh, familiar with this man. Um, of course, uh, also very familiar uh, in terms of, of uh, Macedonia, where there have been enormous architectural projects over the last years. Um, likes to build things, uh, likes to build in a certain monumental scale, uh, likes to, uh, in fact, put his name on uh, these various monuments. 
and uh, in fact has plans for any number of other buildings uh, as well. Um, I have tried uh, to, to, to make it clear that you might have a little bit of trust uh, in, in the United States in terms of this election if you're worried. Are, are, people, are you concerned about uh, a President Donald Trump? People are concerned? Not concerned? Well, I, I'm here to tell you not to be concerned. Uh, I don't think that he'll be elected president. Um, so I, I, I would say in general, uh, you don't need to be terribly, terribly concerned for that reason, but perhaps for, for some others. But um, skipping through some things quickly, the fascinating, the fascinating thing that I observed in a city like Skopje is in fact uh, the power that's being placed in various representations of power and of a political uh, regime. Um, you happen upon a building like this, um, it looks very much like the architecture that we're familiar with in various parts of the world. Um, uh, uh, the White House, for instance, and any number of other places uh, representing certain type of democracy. The interesting aspect of it there is, in fact, uh, this is very much uh, a very quick uh, uh, facade going over some very interesting brutalist architecture. It's a fascinating uh, place to observe the construction, quite literally, of a certain aesthetic and sense of, of, of identity uh, that's taking place right before people's eyes. Um, uh, I set, happened to, to see myself, and in fact, if you followed uh, Banksy's uh, dismal, what, dismal land? Is that right? Have you read about dismal land? You'll know that there, in fact, is a pretty direct citation uh, to the Macedonian flag and to uh, a merry-go-round that you can, in fact, see right on one of the main, one of the main squares. So it's interesting the way that's circulated throughout, but in general, uh, an interesting, uh, 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 visibility of a type of monumental uh, architecture that has become, in fact, the target of much of the protest movement. It was nice. I did find at least a, a venue for my next appearance there. Um, but if, if, if you're interested in sort of reading some of the other forces at work uh, in, a, in a society that aren't the most visible, aren't the monuments, uh, when you look at the side streets and you see things like uh, uh, the economic chamber of Macedonia that might have seen somewhat better, more dynamic days, uh, right next to it, of course, the albatross, uh, and perhaps more telling on a day, daily uh, uh, encounter with semiotics, a very interesting uh, toilet paper brand uh, that uh, perhaps also uh, something of a commentary on economic uh, conditions at present. You have to be a more skilled cultural critic than I am, however, to fully understand the implications uh, of this. Uh, I, uh, I am not against it, but I, I have no ready interpretation of multi-fun uh, toilet paper. For me, though, the interesting experience has been uh, throughout this in terms of talking optimism, peps pessimism, or a post-irony um, throughout uh, this part of the world that I'm just getting to learn now uh, in a very, again, superficial, quick way, an old definition of what has become a verb, of course, uh, to balkanize, I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Um, uh, it was interesting to see, though, there is, in fact, very much an update uh, to this and making its way into the Urban Dictionary, uh, a, a rather more contemporary uh, definition and actually not a bad aphorism, uh, if you can't read that, uh, to fracture and waste something important like a country with something totally unimportant, comma, like ethnic differences. Uh, my favorite part, though, I think is the sample sentence, man, you just balkanized your head on a stump. Uh, so interesting signs of ways in which, um, in fact, a certain reconceptualization of some of the old uh, um, uh, 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 conceptions of of, of a place and of a history and of conflict uh, and of questions of, of, uh, of being doomed to a certain past or having a potential uh, for a different type of future. Um, and that's what's been fun uh, for me is that when I've spoken places, I'm in invited to things like uh, this in Pristina, a hacker space, very typical of the kind of places sometimes where I, where I speak, um, comes up very last minute, uh, and you learn a lot uh, about attempts, in fact, to take initiative to do something new despite any number of problems and, in fact, trying to do so uh, in a way which is all about improvisation of some sort. This is their new do-it-yourself scanner uh, using to, to scan a number of books that have not made their way into the Internet. This is a classic syntax, actually, uh, of Albanian. Um, but this is the kind of project that I've seen uh, a lot of um, because of, of the kind of uh, traveling that I'm doing, the kind of people that, that, that follow nine, 
And for me, it's been in fascinating to kind of see this combination of do-it-yourself kind of, kind of spirit, um, working with your hands, uh, but also a very strong intellectual component as well. I was very happy to see at the hackerspace in Pristina, uh, Hegel's collected works, uh, but in fact arranged in the proper order uh, for a change uh, with volume one, uh, thesis, uh, two, uh, of course, antithesis, and three, synthesis in the middle, uh, rising somewhat higher than the other two. Uh, I thought that that was, uh, in fact, quite, quite impressive. But what I left with primarily uh, was, in fact, uh, the slogan of the place, uh, which is not so far away from uh, what it is that I try to do every day uh, online with doing a lot with a little, uh, although often with questionable results. Um, but they were very careful to make the point that what they're doing is not terribly new. Uh, there's a great history of, of innovation uh, here. Um, they pointed out, for instance, uh, and I saw uh, in visiting the Museum of Socialism in Sofia. Has anyone gone to the Museum of Socialism there? I recommend it. Interesting, interesting place. Uh, you learn for one thing that it is in fact a Bulgarian socialist who is to be credited with the invention of the mouse pad. Um, uh, also, uh, of course, uh, often thought to be a later invention, the uh, selfie stick. Uh, uh, I, can, I, can, I can very much encourage you to, to have a look at that. Um, let me skip through a couple of things and get to a question of what it is that I do and how it is that maybe uh, philosophy or critical theory has anything to do with this. Um, as some of you know, my background is, is in literature, uh, more tangentially in philosophy. I'm sure you all know the origin of, uh, of the word philosophy, uh, the love of wisdom or knowledge or of learning. Any philosophers here tonight? No one. No one who will admit they're a philosopher here tonight. There is someone far in the back as a philosopher, OK? Um, and because there are philosophers here, I also have to make it clear I'm really not a philosopher at all. Uh, if anything, I dabble in the realm of theory, which is not the love of wisdom, but rather uh, the love of theory. Um, uh, also, uh, more specifically, within the realm of critical theory, which as you know, of course, is the love of using highly enigmatic Walter Benjamin quotations to make a highly obvious point. Um, uh, that's only in reference to my own work, of course. Uh, I'm sure you've all done better work. But largely, um, coming from a tradition of working with the Frankfurt School, some of you have probably uh, worked with some of that in the past as our philosopher present. Uh, I worked at the Frankfurt School in the past. No, not much, a little bit. Uh, well, the shorthand often is, is, is in talking about the Frankfurt School is a way in which uh, any number of, 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 of thinkers, some, some key ones being uh, Theodore Adorno, uh, Walter Benjamin, any number of others, uh, Krakauer, for instance, try to think about Marx's work uh, together with that of Freud, uh, together with a rereading of Hegel, and largely asking the question of, why is it that a revolution has not happened as Marx predicted it would happen? Right? What is it that's changed in society? And in developing and asking those questions, try to develop a, a theory that would also uh, be in many ways a form of, of a praxis, a way in which you could intervene in society, change it in some way. Um, but Marx has always remained uh, part of that, that, that thought and has remained part of what I think uh, uh, as well, in, in a rather uh, somewhat ironic way, I suppose. Um, mine is not a radical reading of Marx, uh, which I'm sure some of you are uh, familiar with. Uh, it's also not necessarily the reactionary uh, reading of Marx that some of you know. Uh, it's also not necessarily a revisionist uh, reading of Marx, which you might be familiar with. Um, I try to concentrate more on the, what I call the realistic uh, reading of Marx uh, right, right here. Uh, some guilty laughter I hear uh, there. And largely that's gone into formulating a a uh, project that I've sort of called somewhat jokingly utopian uh, negation, uh, which I define uh, uh, this way. It's rather abstract, uh, I understand. Um, as some of you know, I have a favorite allegory for utopian negation that perhaps illustrates that somewhat better. Uh, that's uh, uh, this, of course. Uh, I'm sure that you're uh, familiar with this, but might not have been aware of the fact that uh, this is about utopian negation. Um, but what does that, what does that actually uh, mean in terms of, of, of a community uh, that you can create uh, online and what does it make possible? Um, as you know, I've often pushed negation to a certain absurd extreme in the direction more of, 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 of nihilism. Um, but it's put me in a rather odd uh, position in terms of navigating the contradictions of working online and working uh, in a way uh, as a uh, quasi-professional uh, uh, Twitterer or aphorist, 
recently, in fact, produced my own cultural commodity um, uh, using no less than Adorno's own face as a, as a logo. Um, it makes it somewhat, somewhat difficult, in fact, um, in that this is a great critic of uh, the mass production of culture and questions uh, what it is that happens to ideas, to music, uh, to philosophy, to thought itself under conditions of mass production. Um, so it's not without its difficulties. Um, and for me, I've tried to remain rather low tech, uh, rather do it yourself uh, in my, my own approach even after uh, becoming part of, of the culture industry. It is true you get somewhat better uh, transportation after you sign with a German publisher, uh, uh, but you also, you also end up with a fair number of suggestions uh, from the culture industry. They like your idea, something like nine, but they think maybe you might want to soften your message a little bit. Uh, there might be a little bit more money to be made uh, through self-help. Um, and in fact, if you really want to make any money at all, uh, you cannot forget the American market. Uh, so I've tried in some ways, though, to remain somewhat true uh, to Adorno's own critical uh, uh, work, his own more radical critique of society, uh, which we could talk about at length, but my favorite uh, illustration of it, the start of a famous now interview with him, the magazine Der Spiegel, Herr Professor, vor zwei Wochen erschien die Welt noch in Ordnung, so essentially, uh, professor, up until a couple of weeks ago, everything seemed the way it should be. The world seemed in order, right? Uh, his answer, which is the first time Adorno made me laugh, mir nicht, uh, not to me. Uh, an important moment for me, the first time Adorno made me laugh, uh, but also in many ways illustrating what could be done uh, with a little bit of text, with a little uh, short uh, uh, statement at the right time uh, that in fact illustrates a much larger philosophical position. So I've tried hard to respect uh, his, his intellectual uh, legacy over time and tried not to simply cash in uh, on the intellectual uh, uh, cachet of someone like Anna Adorno and tried not simply to uh, become a brand, uh, tried not to cheapen in many ways a larger cultural tradition uh, uh, and tried also in many ways to uh, uh, honor uh, and to respect uh, a certain period in, in uh, uh, cultural history. Uh, you feel sometimes a little bit guilty about uh, cheapening these things, I suppose, but then you look online and you see that someone else has, in fact, uh, gone much farther uh, uh, than, than you have. Um, uh, one of the more recent incarnations is uh, probably one of the most brilliant is, in fact, this one right here. I don't know who's responsible for that. What someone like Adorno would think about this is probably uh, pretty, pretty clear. Uh, fortunately, there are one or two thinkers out there, um, primarily in uh, Slovenia, uh, who don't think it's a, a, entirely bad uh, anyway. Some of you, I'm sure, recognize uh, Slavoj Žižek, uh, someone who makes frequent appearances in uh, various uh, uh, tweets uh, over, over time. Um, but again, largely not about somehow, <laughs> somehow not, not about popularizing or explaining his work, but much more about somehow demystifying it, uh, making the case for why uh, you might want to approach it, what you might uh, find in it, um, and also a type of, of, of respectful yet irreverent uh, position on uh, the work of a, of a thinker uh, like Zizek, uh, whether it be uh, formulating simple jokes uh, of some sort, uh, or in fact trying to trying to reference uh, his more specific work, or sometimes just very stupid uh, 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 little jokes uh, that make no sense uh, whatsoever, uh, such as this is probably the most ridiculous uh, Zizek joke I've ever written, but probably also the, the best uh, I've ever written. So what does it mean then to take uh, something like, like, like Twitter uh, as your medium for trying to uh, do something different with, with philosophy uh, for me, it's largely involved, um, in some ways, learning the language of something like Twitter. How many of you actually use Twitter or ha frequently? Not many at all. Uh, I've been told people mainly use Facebook here, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, not surprising, I would say in general, as you know, Twitter itself is very concerned about whether people use it or not, um, uh, and, and the, the rate of growth and so on. Um, I don't much care if Twitter makes money. I, I would like it to stick around for a little longer, perhaps. Um, but I do try to make the case why you might want to get involved with something like Twitter. Uh, it's often not clear to people uh, what's in it for them. Uh, try, to, try to make that clear and 
especially the academics uh, might not understand uh, the importance of something like Twitter if they don't think of it within its historical context. Uh, so I, I try to do that uh, as well, the, the, the best I can. Um, but in doing that, but important in doing that is, of course, thinking about what it is that you want to do with, with a medium like Twitter. Um, I've been trying to work out that genre for a while, uh, some of you know, I work somewhat within the realm of comedy, the intersection of j the joke and the aphorism, a classic definition of comedy, of course, tragedy uh, plus time. Um, Twitter comedy is a little bit different, I've come to understand over time, uh, it's more something like tragedy plus time, minus time, uh, and German Twitter comedy is its own subgenre, of course, uh, tragedy plus time minus time uh, minus comedy. Uh, plus fart jokes, uh, plus Hegel, of course, minus, minus Hegel. Uh, sometimes this formula results in um, perhaps uh, tweets that are not the most uplifting. They might seem a little bit hopeless at times, a little bit dismal. Oh, uh, excuse me, that is not mine. Um, uh, sorry, uh, best, best tweet by a sitting pope. Uh, but largely what I've been trying to do, and this is sort of in a way in which I found my own sense of optimism or hope uh, in a profession that I was not happy with. I try to remain uh, uh, true to the topics that interested me, like the beauty of the German language, uh, the flexibility and playfulness uh, of the German language. Uh, some people find uh, German to have words that are simply too long. I try to uh, clarify that uh, the best I can. Uh, some think the language is just somehow too difficult. Uh, try to make the point that that's not the case or that it's not, it's not difficult to learn. Uh, once you start to learn, there are some helpful hints for learning it, uh, etc. cetera. Um, but of course, it's somewhat easier to talk about grammar uh, than it is about philosophy in 140 characters. Um, so I haven't shied away from that, um, of course. Uh, uh, it's, the challenge is not to lose that kind of nuance uh, when it comes to, to talking about philosophy on Twitter. Um, that you want to uh, go into individual works, not just name drop. Uh, you want to deal, in fact, with very difficult uh, philosophical topics, uh, the work of Wittgenstein, for instance. You want to go beyond uh, simply the German tradition uh, to that of the French, perhaps, uh, or, of course, uh, uh, other uh, intellectuals uh, as well. But, of course, there are no jokes about philosophy without some uh, uh, reminder of the core concepts of philosophy that have to be understood uh, before you get any joke uh, uh, about uh, philosophy. So that's, uh, it would of course be a lie to say somehow that Twitter is always this intellectual. Uh, it of course is not. Uh, probably the most uh, popular tweet uh, I've ever written uh, is in fact this. Uh, so that is not to be, not to be denied. Um, but in doing so, um, largely this is a matter of dealing with language in a critical way, gaining a new perspective on language somehow, thinking about ways in which language, of course, uh, is always an expression of culture but shapes culture. Uh, for me, that's largely involved German culture, but uh, hopefully the idea is, in fact, to uh, think about culture itself as a category. Um, as many of you might know, there have been recent tensions in the last couple of years uh, between Germany and the United States surrounding issues like uh, uh, the NSA, uh, which has really gotten a great deal of coverage after Snowden's revelations, of course, have written a lot about that, uh, currently TTIP, um, uh, uh, other, other issues as well. Um, and uh, it's, always, it's not always the case that German culture gets the respect uh, it deserves, as in recently in Chicago. Um, where I'm from, the Midwest, Wisconsin, uh, home of any number of German immigrants in the 19th century uh, who left their mark on the place, uh, here the house I grew up in. Um, and I tried very hard, in a way, to uh, make the case for why one might want to uh, involve oneself with a culture like that and find a critical potential in it, uh, try to clear up various misunderstandings uh, about it the best I can, uh, trying to, in some way, also uh, 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 speak to many of the uh, perceptions of, of, of a language and a culture. Uh, it is somewhat difficult when you're asked to say something nice about Swiss German, uh, but you uh, do the best you can, or uh, especially something like the German spoken in Austria, although at least in the United States there's only really one association with Austria. Any idea what that might be? 
Yes, actually, that is better. I should have thought of that. That is stupid of me not to. Uh, next time, next time I need to say something about Austrian German, I will think of Australian, actually. Uh, the best I could do was, of course, a particular movie uh, that uh, everyone in Austria denies ever having seen, uh, The Sound of Music. Uh, so I, I, I did my best to come up with something uh, for that. Uh, halfway successful, not really. But something you learn uh, early on is when you're dealing with that kind of thing, uh, some, some messages are considered just a little too uh, taboo, uh, but probably the lasting monument uh, to the attempt to somehow take what I've learned from a medium like Twitter and playing with sort of the marketing, the, the, the rhythms of marketing language, but trying to do something different with them uh, is in fact a monument to the worst pun that I've ever written, uh, which uh, you can visit uh, yourself uh, and... New York outside of Deutsch's house. I don't quite understand the popularity of this thing. I, uh, of course, had a somewhat better idea. Uh, but still, um, this is what you end up with uh, in, in moments like this. Um, so let me think then about uh, what it is that uh, I have at least learned from my own attempt at improvisation online um, that could speak to some idea of an active involvement uh, with uh, the kind of problems that we have discussed uh, uh, that, are, that are very current here and elsewhere. Um, and uh, of course also the question recently even of uh, uh, my time in, 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 in Skopje about the ongoing colorful revolution as it's called, if there are ways to, to think that through about uh, ways in which in fact there might be some organizing uh, potential uh, in, that, uh, in that movement uh, and in various networks of people. Uh, as you know, uh, political, con political con co coercion uh, in the United States is often somewhat more subtle, um, and hence uh, there are questions about ways in which uh, social transformation can come about. Uh, but certainly something I've been learning uh, in my time here recently is ways in which uh, 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 any number of things can be done here uh, much better. Uh, I've noticed business has become much more efficient uh, than it is uh, uh, in, in English. There are ways in which uh, there are also potentials, I think, uh, in fact, to uh, 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 form various coalitions and conversations with people and so on. Uh, there isn't much that can be done uh, using Twitter uh, for something like that. Um, I was happy to see there was at least some uh, uh, tacit embrace uh, of that uh, uh, slogan early on. Um, but as you know, I'm not someone who's necessarily overly optimistic about political transformation. I try to uh, uh, do a little search and see what it is that I've had to say on the subject of, of revolution over the last uh, few years. I can't say that anything that I found was uh, particularly uh, hopeful or particularly useful uh, or that in any way represented a particularly serious uh, theorization uh, of any of these uh, points throughout. Uh, probably the best thing that I've learned on the subject of revolution recently also came from the Museum of Socialism uh, in uh, Sofia. Uh, that is, in fact, from, from Lenin. But the one, the one thing, and this is what I'll conclude with, are ways in which um, I've tried uh, every place I've been the last week to uh, think about uh, if there are ways in which you can embrace uh, a certain uh, uh, language of social media and a language of, of uh, 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 marketing and a language of uh, saying a lot with a little that in, for, in fact can, can change your perception of yourself and change uh, your perception outside of where you are. Uh, I've done my, my, my best to think that through. I'm not happy with, with, with many of the results. Um, Started in, in, in Kosovo, uh, the best I could come up with uh, there was uh, something that perhaps uh, says something uh, about the uh, dynamic nature of society or questions about uh, you might like Kosovo if you only knew it, uh, try to uh, uh, emphasize that, or simply maybe a very honest uh, appeal uh, uh, as well. Um, or perhaps here one could also learn something from Las Vegas as an architecture um, much of what was the uh, uh, discussion when I was there was this very recent article on the front page of the New York Times about, about uh, Kosovo and about Pristina. Um, Macedonia is somewhat more difficult, uh, but again, tried, uh, tried what I could uh, to come up with something uh, that might make the case for why you might want to actually get to know more about 
the place, um, a fair amount of concern about perhaps people losing sight of an ongoing political struggle there. Again, I'm not particularly proud of the result. Uh, the best I could come up with, uh, Macedonia, don't leave us alone uh, I could see that perhaps establishing itself uh, on a t-shirt somewhere. Uh, but perhaps some people don't know even very much about the place or, or where it is. Uh, Macedonia, it's where we're from. Uh, I thought it uh, could be a, a useful first step in engagement uh, with Macedonia. Another attempt, again, uh, uh, very stupid but perhaps catchy Macedonia, yes we Macedidia, uh, or simply Skopje, uh, 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 also embarrassing. Uh, Serbia, also very difficult, not proud of the results. Serbia, we don't deserve you, uh, or maybe just very simply, uh, Serbia, you know where Zizek's from. Uh, uh, Croatia, also somewhat difficult. Um, the new Hungary, uh, I don't know, that, that seemed like, like, like people liked it there somewhat. Uh, the next one, a little bit more of a stretch poetically, uh, you, have to, you have to think about this uh, somewhat liberally in pronunciation, uh, Croatia, in your facia, uh, you could see this working, right? Um, so I thought if I've, if I've attempted uh, some attempt at very poor uh, 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 marketing, branding uh, of, of any number of other places, I, I would try here the best I could. Um, I asked for some suggestions uh, upon arrival. Uh, I was told that there's a new landmark that's been met here in terms of, of uh, uh, the, the economy, right? That in fact, in the past, people would say, well, we're a poor country. Um, but uh, at least there's Albania, which is, which is poor. I was told that that has changed, is this correct? Uh, so uh, I thought, well, you might go with something like this, uh, could, could do the job. Um, I've also been told that there's been a major uh, education reform very recently, which I thought could be very popular in terms of generating interest. Uh, perhaps something, uh, something like, like this uh, might, be, might be helpful. Um, <laughs> And, and, and otherwise, again, rather difficult, um, but I thought what might actually be quite helpful, at least in a German-speaking environment, uh, maybe something uh, uh, along these lines. But I have to say, in general, in general, rather, rather, rather difficult, I understand. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't even going to show that one. Uh, my apologies. Um, or, of course, uh, this also came up in our conversation. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily in the optimism category, uh, but you could always, uh, of course, uh, uh, speak to a very famous theater staging here uh, not so terribly long ago. Uh, but in general, it's been a matter of trying to think through even a larger political collective you might think through in some other, some other ways. Uh, start to think about ways in which you might think about uh, even a new form of, of, of a larger supranational identity. Um, some of them uh, catchier than others, um, but you might think very, very big perhaps, uh, go beyond simply a region and start to think in a global way. Um, this was not my suggestion, but a friend uh, thought you might uh, even think about uh, something along the lines of, of a World Transatlantic Federation. Uh, I'm a little hesitant about then it was pointed out to me that uh, actually it's really all in, in the abbreviation. Uh, so again, uh, I'd simply say transformation, yes, uh, transformation uh, uh, might not work immediately, but even if not, uh, you might in fact uh, find that there's uh, 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 perhaps a silver lining in that. So with that, I will simply uh, thank you for your attention and uh, look forward to any conversation you might be interested in and wish you an Alfida Zin. Thank you very much.